Welcome to Autism Approved, brought to you by Enza Medica. Now here's your host, Kristen Selby Gonzalez. Hi everyone, I am Kristen Selby Gonzalez and welcome to Autism Approved. One out of 91 children between the ages of 3 and 17 are being diagnosed with autism. That's one out of 58 boys. Well, we knew that it was more important than ever to bring you a show that offered you hope, resources, and tools. Today, I have a very special guest, Kim Salvianos, who has a new book. Hello. Hi, thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me. And your new book, Love It, Love It, Love It. Thank you. All I Can Handle, I'm No Mother Teresa. Love it. What, thank you. What gave you like the inspiration? I, I know, mm -hmm. I can imagine what gave you the inspiration, mm -hmm. but what gave you the inspiration for the title? Uh, it was very simple. Uh, when I meet somebody new, and I ultimately end up explaining that Mark and I have three daughters with autism. The first thing out of most people's mouths is, you must be a saint. <laughs> to which I say, no, I am clearly not a saint. So it became easy to say, no, I'm no Mother Teresa. And that just worked out great for a title for a book. Because it gets the point across yeah. and it's humorous. It makes you laugh. Absolutely. So you just get all of a sudden, oh, this must be sort of light. Yes. Uh, the, although the topic isn't. But it gives people, especially if they're either new to the topic yeah. or they have a child that's newly diagnosed, Sure. it kind of takes that um, scariness away yeah. knowing that, wow, this woman has three children Yes. and she's still standing. Right. So I And mean, smiling. Absolutely. And I think you make an important point. I'm so, I've been, my oldest daughter is 16 mm -hmm. and I am so used to this world that you really have to take a step back when you work with parents who are just getting the diagnosis, or so maybe mm -hmm. parents whose child was just diagnosed, uh, you have to handle them with kid gloves. Absolutely. I remember what that feels like. I write about those days when you're first having the questions, when you first get the diagnosis, and it's devastating. Mm -hmm. your, your world is rocked. Mm -hmm. So it's really important for us as uh, <laughs> veterans mm -hmm. uh, with an autism to remember to welcome the newcomers, mm -hmm. uh, hold their hands, make sure they know they're part of a new family uh, and that we will help take care of them. Well, I remember when I got my son's first diagnosis, yeah. they literally hand you a pamphlet. Yeah. And it was like, good luck to you, you know? That's it. And you're sitting there going, I came in, I knew something was off right. and wrong. Usually when you go to a doctor, let's say they have a cold or something, sure. they give you a prescription That's and right. they'll be better in five to seven days. That's right. And with this particular thing, it's like, good no. luck to you. This is probably going to be forever. And you walk away. And I write about it. When we first had the girls diagnosed, and we're meeting in Cleveland this mm -hmm. week, and the girls were diagnosed here in Cleveland, and um, at the hospital they gave us a, a, a pamphlet, and mm -hmm. a, a folder full of mm -hmm. pamphlets, and the very first page said, there, autism is a lifelong disability for which there is no cure. You can only hope to make an autistic person's life more comfortable. Oh, wow. And that's what they sent me out with, with two little girls holding their hands, and the, the utter lack of hope. Everybody deserves hope. When mm -hmm. Patrick Swayze was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer, mm -hmm. everybody on the planet was hoping for a miracle cure for him. And yet with autism, you leave the office with a four-year-old or a mm -hmm. three-year-old and, and, you're, and you're not allowed to have hope. And, yeah. and I just find that galling mm -hmm. and, and a big part of my work is to change that for parents because you know, to hope is human. Absolutely. And if we don't have that, how do you get out of bed in the morning? Well, and it's so interesting because I can remember, because I relate so much. I love your book, by the way. Thank you. Um, I was laughing, crying, yes, you good. know, yes. relating. I was like, <laughs> I remember that, yes. you know. Um, We're all very much alike in we, autism. And it's so funny because as any mom that's out there, when yep. you're reading a book and you've been through it or you are, about, even if you haven't gone through some of it, you can mm -hmm. relate to it, sure. right? And I can remember sitting at a pre-IEP. Mm -hmm. um, if you guys don't know, that's an individualized education plan at the school. Very important. <laughs> and I remember sitting there, and they're going back and forth, and basically her assistant keeps bugging her, coming in, what do you want for lunch? What do you want oh. for lunch? And I'm, you know, they're basically telling me my child's not going to be able to do anything. Like, the goals mm -hmm. are going to be, like, maybe clap his hands, mm -hmm. you know, and this woman can't figure out what she wants for lunch. Yeah. And I'm, you know, a new mom. Sure. I'm really scared. And... I wish I would have had it in me or I understood more at mm -hmm. that point because she kept telling her assistant, I can't decide yet. I'll get back to you after she was finished Ooh. with me. And I wish I could go back in time and say, you can't even decide what you want for lunch. Right. But you can decide my child at two and a half at that time, mm -hmm. entire future. Yeah. I, and that when you said that, it just triggered that mm -hmm. memory because it's so true. Yep. If people are out there and you guys are watching and someone's telling you that you know it's never possible, 
we all know that's not true. Walk away. Absolutely. Find someone else. Those are the, and why yep. would you want to be in that camp? Right. You know, and what's fascinating is so many of these doctors out there now that are now jumping ship. Like yep. they are the ones that it was never, they are never going to look. Yep. They're never going to talk. And then it happens to somebody in their family. Right. And what do they do? They come over sure. to our camp. Sure. Because they heard one child did it. Yep. So I, I just, I love parents like you that are out there doing this. Thank and, you. you know, and I know you have three daughters. Yes. So if you can tell everybody, what are their ages and when were they diagnosed? Sure. Uh, Mia is 16 and a half because when you're under 40, you still use that half year, maybe under 30. So <laughs> Mia is 16 and a half. Uh, Gianna just turned 15 this month. Okay. And Isabella is 10. She'll be 11 in the fall. Okay. And uh, they were, let's see, Mia and Gianna were diagnosed together. In 19, November of 1999, uh, we had questions about both. We had Mia in early intervention, then we had Gianna in early intervention. Uh, they presented very differently. Their autism, like most kids with autism or mm -hmm. people with autism, it looks different in every person. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you've seen one child with autism, you've seen one nice child job, with certainly. autism. And even year to year, they can change greatly. Uh, so Mia and Gianna were four and five years old when they were, when they were diagnosed, or three and four years old. And uh, then... We, we really thought about, you know, maybe we won't have another child. Perhaps mm -hmm. we'll stop stop the family and change those plans because we knew we were going to be facing a lot of work mm -hmm. for the girls. And uh, December 31st, 1999, remember that old print song, Party Like yep. It's 1999? Yep. Woo! <laughs> yeah, we did. It was 1999. <laughs> and in September, Bella was born. Oh, wow. So We had a good, had a good New Year. We had a great New Year's. <laughs> uh, but, uh, and, we, and, and there she was. So, mm -hmm. uh, and then her, her development was very different. So all three of the girls are completely unique in their presentation. Uh, of what is called, you know what is now labeled autism. Now, are they are they all different? As you were saying, they're all different yeah. on the spectrum. Are they all different levels? They are. They are. Mia, if you were to meet Mia, uh, she looks a lot like me. Uh, she she presents probably as what you would consider classic autism. Okay. Uh, she speaks to make her needs known. She can talk. Mm -hmm. She talks when she needs something or wants something. Um, she scripts sometimes some of her shows. Uh, she can read at a low level so she can get by with basic reading. Mm -hmm. She loves the computer. She can entertain herself on her website. She can find what she needs. Uh, she's happy. Mm -hmm. you know, she eats well. She sleeps well. Her health is good now. Uh, she is in special ed. She's the first class to go into our town's high school. They started an autism program at the high school level okay. because as the epidemic has aged, you know, this, this volume of people with autism did not exist 25 years ago when special ed was just kicking mm -hmm. in. So we're the first high school class uh, in our town with kids on the spectrum. So you're setting the path. Yes, who knew? I'd be <laughs> blazing a trail. Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. Not by choice. I was the. We're all the accidental mm -hmm. activists, aren't we? Absolutely. We I were, love we that. Accident the accidental activist. Oh, I that's was, good. Man, I was recruited into this <laughs> like a, like the draft in Vietnam. This was this was not. Yeah. And I'm real clear about that. You know, mm -hmm. this is not what I was expecting. Mm -hmm. uh, but here you are. So you can sink or swim. Mm -hmm. You know, make the best of it. Move on or or collapse. Um, so that's me. I'm 16 and a half. Gianna just turned 15. Uh, she has the most ability in terms of her verbal skills. She can speak fairly well. She's a, Her processing time has really shrunk, so she'll answer questions, which okay. is great. If you ask her something, she'll answer yes or no, which yeah. is phenomenal. And uh, she's a classic middle child. You know, I like to tell people autism is what my kids have. It's not who they are. Mm -hmm. And I'm really adamant about that because aut autism is not their identity. They're, they're, they're humans. Mm -hmm. you know, they're children. They're young ladies at this point. And Gianna would be the classic, she's just a classic middle child. She's mm -hmm. funny. She has a sense of humor. She's, uh, she's boy crazy. Mm -hmm. Oh, she is boy crazy. That happens. Uh, Mia would always be, if she, if she didn't have autism, she'd be quiet. She'd be studious. Mm -hmm. She'd be reading. Gianna would be my social butterfly, no doubt. And then Bella, God bless, I love Bella. She's uh, 10 years old. Uh, Pre-verbal. Bella has almost no speech. Okay. But Bella, I, I think, has a she has a very different presentation of what was, I say it was, she was labeled with autism, and I, I'm real clear about that mm -hmm. in the book, uh, most likely because her sisters were labeled with autism, and this whole, you know, it's genetic, it's genetic, it's genetic, oops, recent big study. Yeah. Wow, it's not as genetic as we thought. It's mm -hmm. it's un, it's environmental, but which we know. Look, but somebody could look at you that didn't know that and go, sure. oh, gosh, she has It three. has to be genetic. It has right. to be. I mean, all of her kids all of are. Kids. But right. instead of looking, going, well, what neighborhood did she live in? What when, happened? Where, right. where, did, where were they happened? conceived? You know, sure. what else is going on in the environment? Sure. Clearly, yeah. there's something within our genetics yep. that's, you know, they Making say it. genetics slows the gun, environment mm -hmm. pulls the trigger. Absolutely. But uh, Bella, Bella was more likely a birth injury, and, and I talk about that. She was breech, and we turned her around in utero, which is sort of like turning the QE2 around in a bathtub. 
and about as mm -hmm. pleasant. Mm -hmm. And her structure was different when she was born. She didn't sit up. She didn't walk. Most of our kids develop physically, fairly typically. Mm -hmm. They roll. They sit. They up, all their milestones. They they meet the developmental mm -hmm. milestones in terms of physical activity. Yep. Maybe a little bit later. It's it's more of the educational milestones mm -hmm. and the speech milestones that they miss. Whereas Bella's physical milestones were profoundly altered. So I have always said I think Bella, uh, though she has the autism diagnosis, would be comorbid with with a mild cerebral palsy. Oh wow! I really do. Okay. 